Hello, and welcome to the How to Make a Podcast podcast. My name is Casey Ruff from Boundless Body LLC, and I am the host of Boundless Body Radio. Before October of 2020, I was not a podcaster. Now, I have recorded hundreds of episodes featuring incredible guests, created tons of helpful content, and have consistently generated thousands of downloads every month since I began. I'm just a regular dude trying to share a message, and now I'm ready to show you my process, my successes and failures, and everything I've learned along the way to help you start your own podcast. Together, we'll explore the entire process of having a podcasting idea and take it all the way to publishing your first episode and explore all the steps in between. Then I'll give you all the tools that you will need so you can record as many episodes that you want to release after that. Podcasting is one of the most enriching skills I've ever added to my life. And I've learned a ton by talking with some of my heroes and sharing it with anyone who wants to join us on our journey. So sit back, grab a notebook, take some notes, and welcome to the How to Make a Podcast podcast. Hey, hey, this is Casey Ruff. Thank you so much for joining us on the How to Make a Podcast podcast. This is episode nine, and if there were ever a time where it was amateur hour, it would probably be during this episode. We are gonna talk about marketing. I am terrible (laughs) with marketing, but to be fair and true to the show, I want to really show you my process and the things that I've done, the things I've learned along the way. And so I am fairly confident that you will be able to do this much better than I do. I'm just gonna share a few things that I do so that you have a frame of reference and hopefully you get some good ideas and take your own ideas and make this, you know, a lot better than I, than I make it. I, I try to keep things really simple. So the first thing I want to talk about is sharing the actual audio file and any visual sound bites that you have created with your guest. It's also a really good idea to create YouTube videos like we talked about in the Alitu episode, episode seven, where we talked about editing. It's a really good idea to share all of that with your guest. You can do it maybe the day before it releases or the day that it does release. I like to do it early so that my guests can get a sneak preview. I also like when their team has all the resources that they need. I don't really care what they do with it. If they want to release it on their platform, if they want to cut it up and use that for other marketing, they can start with that immediately. That doesn't really make a difference to me. We just stick with our same schedule. We've talked about this in the past, but I think that's a really great way to thank your guest for taking the time to be on your show and also give them some really nice marketing materials and a sneak preview of the audio. I've only had really good positive feedback when I've done that. And so that's something that I think makes it more likely that that person is going to listen early, maybe use it for marketing, share it around, and that should help the podcast get a little bit more marketing. It's also a nice way to ask if they want to make any changes, if they said something that maybe they want to walk back a little bit, that you can go back and edit later. So I think that's a really nice way to start the marketing process. Next, you kind of want to decide where do you want to put the podcast so that a lot of people will see it. And so a really obvious one would be your social media Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you use is probably a great place to start that podcast. You may have a podcast page like we do where I can just upload any episodes directly there. If somebody likes us on Facebook, they'll get all the content, all the promos. We'll make some visual sound bites there and and that's where people can see them. So let's start with Facebook. Facebook is really easy, especially if you are using Buzzsprout. They make it so easy because you can link up your own social media and make a custom link very easily that already has the episode there. It will bring people back to the Buzzsprout landing page. They can click on whatever podcast listener they use that you are directed on and will take them right there. That's the easiest way to do it is just click the Facebook button and you'll see that it just gets uploaded immediately. You can share it also to different pages on Facebook. And so let's say you're making your, you know, the episode we talked about, you and Shauna make your crazy cats episode and you wanna see, you know, where's the target audience? You might not have a very wide audience if you just share it on your social media, unless you have a lot of other people that really love crazy cats, but there might be an entire page that is just crazy cat lovers around the world. And maybe they would absolutely love to listen to your podcast. That's exactly what they were looking for. So it makes it really convenient through Buzzsprout to be able to do that. And I recommend going through and finding where strategically would be the best places to share those around. Instagram, 
I straight up suck at Instagram. Don't take any Instagram advice from me. I try to keep this as absolutely simple as possible where I will make a post about the podcast. I will include the link in the bio, whatever. And then I just let it go. I don't know that it has any influence whatsoever. I get some likes. The biggest thing that I do on Instagram is make absolutely sure that I am tagging the person and including any hashtags that they use a lot. And that way it makes it really easy for them. They, they're they tagged, all the hashtags they use are used. And that way when they share it around, that can be something that can draw more people in, which is totally fine. Twitter, this is another one where Buzzsprout just makes it so easy. You click a button, Twitter, and it gives you a link already into your own profile, listening to such and such episode. And then all I have to do is go through and see if that person has a influence, a following on Twitter. I will definitely make sure I want to tag them or then just add any hashtags that I want to add. I will leave it there. And just like anything on Twitter, probably best that you just put something out there and walk away and leave it. Don't, <laughs> don't spend too much time going back uh, to see the result. But anyway, that makes it super easy. There's one other one on the Buzzsprout um, kind of social media shares, and that's LinkedIn. I do next to nothing with LinkedIn, but just for the hell of it, and just because they make it so easy, I'll just click LinkedIn. I'll see if I can tag the person, and that's it. I don't think I've had a single follow or whatever you get on job offers. I don't know, LinkedIn. Um, but if that person is tagged, on there, or if they already had a, have a profile, that might be something that's nice for their business profile. And so I'll just, I'll just do that just because Buzzsprout makes it so easy. Those are the only ones that I do any marketing on. You may decide that you can do TikTok or Clubhouse or whatever new social medias come out in the week before I release this episode, but just be thinking about, you know, where are you strong on social media? And also where is your guest strong? And you really want to kind of promote them and get that out. There's also a cadence that we use, um, to kind of tease the episode. You can do this however you like, but the, the way that we like to do it is, uh, especially on boundless body, when we have an episode releasing on Friday, I will start on Thursday by dropping all of the visual sound bites that I've already created. They're all in my email. All I need to do is go back, download them to my phone if I'm on a walk or to my desktop. And, and that way it makes it really simple to say, hey, new episode drops tomorrow and it will tease it out a little bit. And that's where I'll also tag them, like just like we talked about, making sure that they can see it. They already have a copy that I've emailed them. They're gonna be more likely to share it to their audiences and they may be reaching way more people than you. And so I'll do that on Facebook and Twitter and um, I'll do that also on Instagram. That just makes it really easy. That's our cadence. I want somebody to know like, wow, this person's gonna be my on my show tomorrow. How cool. There's a sound bite, makes them look brilliant. It, 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 that's been a nice way to kind of tease our episode. And then I will go through when the episode launches and do all those things that we just talked about, share it around on social media, make sure all the tagging is done, and that's about it. One thing that I have to mention, I used to do this a lot, and I'll use a specific example. I got to interview Theo Fleury, which if you're not an NHL expert, he is one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Um, somebody who's been a personal hero to, to me, somebody I've seen play several times, and I got to interview him. And it was such an honor, so cool to be able to talk to him. He doesn't do a lot of podcasts, and so it was really great. When that episode launched, I figured it would be well, well worth the money to do social media paid ads. And I thought, okay, I want everybody in North America who's a specific age that would have been a fan when he was playing to, and, and also people who love hockey, I want all of those categories to see this episode so that we can get mega downloads on it because this is a blockbuster, it was a great interview, he did amazing, and I want those specific people to see it. It got a very pedestrian number of downloads. It was not any greater than any of the others that I've done. It was very, very, very average. I spent probably 50 bucks on Facebook ads. And I can say I tried that probably two or three times and I have not one time seen that pan out whatsoever. So that's just my experience. Sorry, Facebook, but it doesn't look like that was a really good investment. So I definitely stopped doing that. This is another good time to mention 
like we talked about before, if you are doing an interview style and you have somebody on and you guys mention somebody else, this is a really great time to make sure that person is also tagged and that you're sending the visual sound bites and also the episode to them so that they can share it around. That's just more people that can hear your particular episode. I think that's just a low hanging fruit. There are also options for monetization and marketing. And I haven't looked too much into that, but you may find that if you're partnering up with a corporation who is going to, you know, give you some money to be able to do your podcast in return for you mentioning their products and services and things like that, they may also appreciate if you're tagging them, they may turn around and share that on their own platform, which again, I haven't done a lot of and don't know a ton about. So don't take it from me as far as that goes, but that may be another option of getting your voice out to other people. So feel free to explore that option if you like. I, I'm not your resource to go to on that one. I just wanted to mention it so that you can do your own research and figure out what's best for you. One of the last things I wanted to talk about on this shorter episode, since it's not really my strong suit, is the principle of reciprocity. So this is something that we've learned through personal training, is that if you offer somebody something and it's free or it's high value, the other person is going to tend to do the same for you. So one really interesting way that I have found to be able to get more people listening and especially to get a lot of reviews is to start listening and reviewing other podcasters and then let them know that you did so. Okay. So if I'm investigating a client, I'm doing my research, I'm going to find all kinds of different podcasts that I was unfamiliar with. And I'm going to listen to that content because this interviewer, again, somebody I probably don't know is conducting an interview on this person that I'm researching. I'm going to be able to get a great sneak peek at some of the questions to ask this person. And maybe some of the questions they get asked all the time that I don't want to ask that person since they have answered it so many times. And I will find a lot of really great podcasts and every time I do, I try as hard as I can to make sure that I leave them a five-star rating on Apple, where they have the most influence. I leave them a review, even if it's just a few sentences, just say what a great host they are, how much you appreciate the content, I highly recommend this, whatever you want to say. And then I'll screenshot that and send it over to the host of that program and just tell them like, hey, great show. I'm researching such and such. Isn't he awesome? I'm going to host him on our show. You did such a great interview. I loved it. I gave you a rating and review. Here you go. And I don't necessarily ask for that person to do anything in return for me. But what happens really frequently is they will respond with a really nice message and say, thank you so much. What do you do? What's your show? Maybe I'll go listen to an episode there. And then you can even share them a link. You can talk about what you do. That's a really great way to start to build a community around podcasting. I have to say, not only have I made a lot of really great friends by doing that, people I still contact and still ask advice and give advice to other podcasters who are just doing this on their own, but I have found many podcast guests just from doing that. You're interested in this particular topic. This other person is obviously interested in this topic. You might be a great fit. Maybe they'll host you uh, on their show. I mean, it's a, it's a really cool and easy way to build a community and to share the love around. And, and again, the principles of reciprocity is, it's just, you're, you're giving something out there and the other person will tend to want to do that again, back to you and for you. So I think that's a really great way to, to market and get more eyeballs out there on your show and really just good karma. I mean, I, I don't like to ask for ratings and reviews, although I don't think anything's wrong with that. And we do that on this show. I don't do that on Boundless Body Radio, but that's a nice way to make a community that way. There are also pages on Facebook that are for podcasters. Buzzsprout is one, Alitu has one. There's many, many, many out there. And some of them will allow all podcasters, maybe on certain days or maybe just all the time, they will allow people on the page to share their page so that people can go and listen and have rating review trades. And I thought that was really, really fun when I was doing that, when I was first getting started and I wanted to get up and going and wanted a lot of ratings and reviews. I would just offer to anybody, send me your podcast and I will rate and review it for you. Again, not asking anything in return. And I had 
all kinds of podcasts queued up. It was really interesting too, because you got to know, you know, different formats or different things that you had ne never considered. I learned about three golfers who are also fathers and trying to figure out how to make golf fit in their life. I found two drunk dudes in Minnesota that like to tell jokes to each other and they just had a really fun time. I learned about the history of women in South Southeastern Asia. I mean, you name it. I've, <laughs> I've heard and rated and review all kinds of crazy podcasts. And many of those people did the same for me, which I ended up really appreciating. And it was actually kind of fun to learn about stuff that I have no, no excuse knowing about in my day to day. And again, it did give me a lot of ideas. I could see the people that were doing it really well, the people that were absolutely not doing it very well. Um, I did also meet a lot of people that are still my friends today and people that I've hosted and have hosted me through that method. And it's been really cool. So that's something that you can do. Some of those pages are pretty strict on sharing your podcast to be able to do that. So just make sure you investigate that before you do so you're not breaking any rules. They, I learned, would kick you out pretty quick if you break some of those rules. But there do exist pages or times of the month where that is allowed. And I thought that was a great way to get people listening to my show, maybe a little bit of marketing. If nothing else, I got to leave a rating review with somebody and encourage them on their journey. And hopefully that helps all of us. So that's the episode about marketing. It's, like I said, probably lacking a lot, but those are just some tips and tricks of low-hanging fruit, stuff that I'm never going to spend a lot of time doing, but things that can get more people listening to your show. That is all for episode nine. We are going to conclude with one last episode, which is the now what? What are you going to do after all of this is done? Thank you for listening to the How to Make a Podcast podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave us a rating and review on Apple. Also, be sure to check out the show that made all of this possible, Boundless Body Radio, where we provide tons of helpful and informative content, feature incredible guests, and talk all about health and wellness. Cheers, and thank you for joining us on the How to Make a Podcast podcast.